Well, good morning to each of you. It is good to see you all, those of you who are here live and those of you who are tuning in Facebook Live and Instagram or even YouTube later. Good to see you all. Uh, we, are, we are living in quite an interesting time, aren't we? Um, and in, in the midst of this whole thing, uh, we, are, we are serving a God who has not been surprised yet. He has not been shocked. He, he hasn't, you know, there, there's an emoji uh, that, you know, when you have this like, oh, man, you, you put your hand on your face like, ah, oh, you know, uh, God hasn't used that emoji yet. And so there, there is a kind of peace that God the Father has that we too can also have because of our connection with him. And so while the world is experiencing the reality that everything that can be shaken will be shaken, it's also exposing to us our dependence on some of those things that can be shaken. And when our dependence on things that can be shaken gets shaken, we get shaken. And anxiety is one of those things that can transfer just like a virus in and of itself. So the same way anxiety can transfer and anxiety is contagious, so is faith. So is peace. Have you ever been around a person that just, they just had peace and because they didn't jump into or accept your invitation to your pity party, and, and you, you, you are venting to them and you're pouring your life out, your, all your concerns, and they sat there like, uh-huh, it's going to be okay. You're like, no, it's not. Like, how come you don't get the anxiety I'm trying to express to you because they have a place of peace? And sometimes another person's peace can be offensive to you because you're so used to your anxiety being contagious that you want them to catch it. And if they don't catch your anxiety, they don't appear to be compassionate. They don't appear to understand. Well, they do understand, but they also understand something else. They've learned how to trust God. They, they, they've learned how to depend on God. They've learned how to make what I'm going to talk about in a few minutes a trust transfer. So as we get into this, this lesson today, uh, just for a few, I'm so glad, I am so glad this clock is right here because this is going to help all of us today go home on time. Um, I, I want to talk about Redefining the comfort zone. Redefining the comfort zone. We are so addicted to comfort that when the things we have found comfort in get shaken or disturbed, sometimes even for us as people of God, we can get rattled in a very unbiblical way. When we are Kids, as we're growing up, and kids are expressing what they want to be when they grow up. The idea of comfort is so much ingrained in our mentality and where we place our, our faith and our hope that we transfer this to children when they tell us about their dreams that we don't think are going to enable them to live a life of comfort. Well, I want to be an artist. Oh no, you 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 no, you don't. You won't be able to make a living being an artist. Or I I want to be a police officer. No, no, that's 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 too dangerous. That's too dangerous. Let's 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 let's, let's think about what what else might God be speaking to you, right? And so we so anything we have in our own anxiety as adults, we actually teach kids to seek comfort. Even if it's our own comfort as parents. I need you to choose an occupation that I feel comfortable about knowing that you're okay. I need you to think about mommy and daddy on this one. You, you might not make enough money or, or it's going to be hard to make a career with that particular idea. We try to teach kids how to choose an option that will have less struggle, more comfort and less struggle. So don't, don't worry about being an, an artist. You don't, you, don't, you don't want to make a living trying to paint stuff. Be, what about being an engineer? 
What about being a doctor? What about? And so we, we, we have this thing where we pass on to people our own anxieties about stuff. When other people's decisions make us uncomfortable, we try to convince them to make a decision that could help us be more comfortable about their decision. We have this unbiblical dependence on comfort. Yep, on. And then we mess around and get into a relationship with God. Uh-oh is right. <laughs> and he says, you know, John, I, I see you have this thing with comfort. But if you're going to follow me, deny self, take up your cross, and follow me. And there's nothing comfortable about none of those three steps. Right. And so our resistance, uh, the, the challenge we have of obeying God's plan, obeying his voice, is that we measure whether or not we're going to do it based on the level of comfort. Some of us, it, 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 you know, you're trying to find your purpose still and all that, and I, and I get it, but, but oftentimes what clouds our clarity about God's plan and purpose for our life is that we have made comfort a requirement. What can cause us to, to, to put him on hold and to hesitate with something that he has clearly communicated is that it's like, God, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but, but where is the, can you meet me halfway? Where, where is the comfort? Like, that's a bit risky. That's a bit dangerous. That's a bit uh, it, uh, considered, it, it's a, uh, I, I don't know how I can make it step by step with what you're telling me to do. The call of God is going to always require us to not just go from a comfort to a discomfort zone, but to redefine what we mean by comfort. Yep. And so even though many of us, according to the statistics, seven, 60 million of us read the purpose-driven life, we read the purpose-driven life and still didn't step into our purpose because in all actuality, we weren't looking for the purpose-driven life, we we're looking for the comfort-driven life. And we tried to examine the book of purpose through the lens of comfort, and we threw the book away and said, this didn't work. It, it could have. It could have. But sometimes we want God's plan to be comfortable. We want his will to be comfortable. Even right now, you have, you have, you are clear about some things God has told you to do, but you're wanting him to change his mind. You're wanting him to soften it up. You're wanting him to put some cushion in it. We have, we have an addiction to the comfort zone and that, that's just our flesh. Uh, we're, we're, we're born with it. We, we don't, we don't like pain. We don't like discomfort. We don't like, we don't like risk. We, most of us, we like things to be all, all planned out. We want to know all the different steps. God, you know, I'll do your will. Just tell me exactly how you want it done. Just tell me all the different steps. And he, he gives you one step. You're like, no, no, I need, I need the next 10. I need the next 10. You know, my personality, you created me to be this, this, this way. I, you created me to be type A. You know, I need to know. So I need you to tell me so I, so I can know. Right. And so we want him to, and he, he just doesn't do that. He just doesn't do that. And right now, this entire world has been thrust into a discomfort zone. The things that we have depended on and trusted have been turned upside down. And that's okay. But what is not okay is for the people of God to have been turned upside down to the same degree as those who don't know God. It's okay for us to experience pain like everyone else. It's okay for us to experience suffering like everyone else. But it is not okay for us to be as hopeless as everyone else. It is not okay for us to be as shaken as everyone else. If, in fact, our faith is rooted in a God who is faithful, then of all people who ought to have some peace, it should be us. Of all people who ought to have some comfort, it should be us. But if we're going to have comfort, we've got to redefine the comfort zone. And so... So the comfort zone for a lot of us is, is if our finances look good. The, the comfort zone for, for a lot of us is, is if we are in perfect health. The, the, the comfort zone is if all these other things are favorable, if there are external things that are favorable, if there are government programs that are favorable, if there are things on our job that are favorable, that, like that's where we find comfort. And if those things change, then it's like we, we, we lose our mind. And we have decided to use the wrong things as our comfort zone. That's what I'm talking about. Let's re redefine, redefine the comfort zone. Man, when I, when I, I left a full-time job last, last July, 
and with, with a wife and, and two and a half kids, uh, and because um, one was on the way. Now I've got a wife and three kids, three girls. We have a beautiful family that God has blessed us with, but, but as the man, as the provider, I was in a discomfort zone. Where I didn't have the 9 to 5, I didn't have the, the 1st and 15th check that was going to come in. I was in a discount, and I was convinced that God had led us in this direction. But he led us out from what I, and I didn't know I was so comfortable with that until it was gone. And that's what a lot of us are discovering right now. That we didn't know we had trusted some things and found comfort in some things until some of those things disappeared. And then our anxiety rose to the surface, and God said, wait, 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 I thought your faith was in me. Yeah, my faith is in you and a nice account. Like, my, my faith is in you and, and, and a certain number in my bank. Like, I, I, you know what I'm saying? Didn't realize that the faith was in the account, or faith was in knowing how to work something out. My own level of competence, my own level of being able to troubleshoot and, and plan strategically, and, and to figure so I didn't know how much dependence I had on that until I couldn't do it. And so a big part of shifting and, uh, and identifying how I redefined the comfort zone was to diagnose where I had misplaced my faith and my comfort. And that's one of the things I hope you do today, to diagnose. Have you put your faith and trust in the wrong thing? Because when we read scripture and we see that uh, in, in scripture, Jesus, he says something interesting to his disciples. He says to them, I am not going to leave you without a comforter. Right? He says in John 14, verses 15 through 17, if you love me, uh, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter. He will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. And so as he's talking to his disciples, he says, you know him because he, he lives with you now and later he'll be in you. But now, okay. But now after the cross, after the resurrection, now he is in us. So what does that mean? That means for every child of God, your comfort is not a feeling. Your comfort is not about external circumstances being favorable. Your comfort is a spirit. Your comfort is a person. Your comfort lives inside of you. So when you feel like you need to be comforted, you don't look outside at other things. You don't look outside of hoping other things uh, get, get lined up into place. Because if you are like me and a bit manipulative and controlling, you want to try to fix things and, and arrange things on the outside to make you feel better on the inside. But, but the shift for me had to be redefining the comfort zone. And the comfort zone is not favorable finances. The comfort zone is not favorable government policies and laws. The comfort zone is not things going amazing on my job. The comfort zone is not all my neighbors who live around me loving me. The comfort zone is the Holy Spirit himself. The comfort zone is the presence of God. And because that shift can take place. Now when you place him as your comfort, your comfort will never leave. Things can change and you can still be comforted. Finances can go up and down and you can still be comforted. Relationship qualities can go up and down and you can still be comforted. The, uh, the stock market can go up and it can go down and you can still be comforted because you've learned to redefine the comfort zone. The comfort zone is the comforter who will never leave. He will never forsake you. He's always with you. So let me tell you how, how that works. How that works. What does that look like? Day to day, because some of you here, you've had a hit on your job and your finances have decreased. You're like, okay, Dr. John, I hear you. This sounds great. I agree with that, but I'm still having some problems. Or I'm still having issues in my relationships with my, with my, with my spouse or with my children. One of the statistics that came out early on when we hit the first wave of this whole pandemic thing is that, is that domestic violence went up. Because people who were at home more and the, 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 the uh, problems they had in their relationships Went to a whole nother level. They got intensified. That eight hour break during the day or that 12 hour break when someone went to work, they didn't have anymore. Now they're stuck at home with the person who they view as a problem. 
And so the reality is that when you make this redefining of the comfort zone, where the comforter is the Holy Spirit, he gives you things to do. He shares with you some guidance on how to make it through, and it's completely different than what you would have come up with on your own. I mean, let's think about it. If, if, if it wasn't what you could come up with on your own, and the answer was something you could come up with on your own, then you don't need him. He will leave you to figure. He said, you, he, God would say, look, you're smart. Figure it out. But the answer, how he leads you through this pandemic, how he leads you through whatever, whatever way this thing has personally affected you, however this global crisis has caused a personal crisis, how he leads you through it is not going to make sense. So there is peace you can have in the midst of this pandemic. There is provision you can have in the midst of this pandemic. But the way you find and discover that peace, the way you find and discover that provision has got to be, is, is based on how well you hear his voice and obey his voice and how you trust his voice. He's going to lead each, and I can't tell you what he's going to do for you or you, you because he's going to give you something specific to you and your situation. And as you obey what he's telling you to do, you'll run into everything he wants to provide for you. That security, that comfort, that peace, that the, the finances even, he will lead you through that. But if, but if you're trying to create uh, situations outside of you to change your situation so that you'll be comfortable, you will completely miss what God's saying to you internally. So this is how this, this, this affected me. This is how I, I learned this lesson. I said, okay, God, well, uh, I, I, I just got you. He's like, well, John, that was the case the whole time. I'm like, well, God, okay, I know that, but you, but you know what I mean. He's like, no, I, I do know what you mean. You're seeing now how much your skill can't help you. You're seeing now how much your education can't help you, how much your connections can't help you, how much your competencies can't help you. All you've got is me. Can you hear me now? I said loud and clear. So he began to tell me different things to do. I want you to go to this, this coffee shop and hang out. Do some work in coffee shops. Okay, I, I can do that. You know, free Wi-Fi, I'm good. I started meeting people in coffee shops. I go to the coffee shop and say, there's a person right there, introduce yourself. Okay, introduce myself. Hey, how you doing? Long story short, that ends up being an encounter that produces some finances. I want, I want you to do a, an online webinar. Okay, well, how much should I charge? Nothing. Okay, okay, but God, I, you know, like everybody else, I, I, need, I need finances. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense for me not to charge anything when I'm doing this, this teaching and stuff. I mean, because people can, can pay, charge nothing. Okay. So I do the webinar. And someone across the country sends me a thousand dollars okay i i couldn't logically have figured that out and in, even if i had charged money for that particular webinar in the, out of all the participants who were there for free and the, 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 the amount i would have charged it would not have come to a thousand dollars it so it, it, it wasn't about math the strategy the planning the calculator the figuring some of y'all are calculator people right Right? That you, you can't do the calculator with God's will. You can't, you can't do it. All you can do is hear what he's saying and do what he's saying, and he will lead you through. So it didn't make sense rationally for me to do something for free when I need finances, but I obeyed what he said. I found comfort in him, not in all these other things. You hear that, that's what I'm trying to tell you. When you go to him and say, God, what's your plan then? What is it that you want me to do? He will lead you to how he wants to provide for you. He will lead you to how he wants to give you peace. He will lead you to all those kind of things. When you redefine the comfort zone, the comfort zone is a person. It's not circumstances. The, the comfort zone is it, it's a person. It's a, it's a Holy Spirit. And he's the one who he, wa he wants you to talk to him. He wants you to listen to him. And he, you, you've, got to, you've got to trust him. So how does that like that's a cool story, but there's a big issue here, and the issue of, of trust. I told you I was going to get to this whole idea of trust transfer, and then we'll 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 close today. 
the, the, the trust transfer comes from this whole, the same idea we have when we are, are, are uh, transferring funds from one account to another account, like in our bank. Right? If, if we want one account to increase, uh, we might take money from this account, take it from over here, and put it over here. Just, just the transfer of money. Right? The same thing happens with our trust. Many of us, we want our trust in God to increase, but we don't want to decrease other places where we've already put our trust. Like you've already deposited your trust in some things. Some of you have, some of you, you, you you've tr you're trusting your spouse to be, to be God. You, you wouldn't put it that way. You wouldn't say it that way. But the expectations you have of your spouse, it's a God expectation. Some of you, you're putting your trust in your finances. You put, you put, you got to find where you put your trust. Because you can't increase your trust in God without transferring it from another place you've already put your trust. For me, I put my trust in my ability to figure things out. For me, I put my trust in my ability to, tr to troubleshoot. For me, I put my trust in so many other things. And so that, that's, the, that's the, uh, the biggest obstacle most Christians have are trying to increase and grow their trust in God is that they don't realize they got to take it away from something else. There's something else that we've idolized. There's something else that we've trusted in, that we've depended on. You got to take that trust away from that and then put it in God. That's what I call the trust transfer. And when you make the trust transfer, now you can hear him more clearly. You're depending on him in a, in a whole new way. Yes, I can hear you now. Right? I can hear you now because I don't have a plan B. See, the plan B, that's, that's where you put some trust. That's why it's called plan B, because in case plan A don't work out. But when you get rid of plan B and make God your plan A, you'll find the reality of seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things will be added unto you. Plan A. As people of God, let me end with this. We don't have time to have a plan B on the table. This is indeed a crisis. It's affected people differently. You need to know what God is saying to you. You need to trust what God is saying to you. And you need to obey what God is saying to you. If you do not do that, you'll have no option but to act like an unsafe person during this crisis. But if you do do that, you'll have the peace that surpasses all understanding. You'll have the provision that seems to come out of nowhere. You'll find yourself walking into miracles during this pandemic, and everyone else is like, how, how are you so peaceful? Because I, I made a trust transfer. Because my comfort is not circumstances, it's the person who's always with me, and he doesn't ever change. That's why I'm walking through this thing. There's a time where the disciples were on the sea without Jesus. He went up to pray. He said, y'all, go to the other side of the sea, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll meet you over there. He goes up to the mountain to pray. And the storm arises in the sea. The disciples think that they're going to die. Jesus is walking across the sea. And we know, most of us know the story. He sees them, and they're like, oh, man, we got a storm and a ghost. This is a bad day. And Jesus says, no, don't worry. It's just me. He comes. He, as he gets closer, Peter says, if it's you, let me come out. Peter steps out of the boat. He's walking in the midst of a storm onto the sea. And that's just an amazing, amazing experience, right? Like, man, that was, that was awesome. Yeah, he, yeah, he sank, but he still walked on water. But the thing I want you to... The takeaway is this. Jesus said, it is before the whole story happened. You guys go across on the sea. Go, go sail across the sea. I'll meet you over there. He already, in his mind, he already knew he was going to walk across the sea like it was nothing. Like walking across the sea was like walking through the park for Jesus. Storm and all. He already planned. I'm just, I'm just going to, we don't know how many times he's done that before. Right? What you got to understand is that sea is seven miles across. 13 miles long, seven miles across. I'm just going to walk across the sea. I'm just going to walk across the sea. You and I are following a person who just walks across the sea. He redefines, it's, it's a whole, you, know, you hear what I'm telling you? He redefines, he doesn't think the way we think. The things that are a big deal to other people are not a big deal to him. So we got to learn to follow this guy and let him change our hearts and change our minds so we can walk across the sea like we're walking through the park, just like any other time. We are in the midst of a storm and you and I can just walk across the sea because we serve somebody who walks across water like he walks across grass. Okay, I'm about to go into another sermon, so we're just going to end, end this today on how we wrap this up. Just gonna close and is that it, Mark? Just gonna close. All right, let, let, let's, let's all stand.
Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for bringing, bringing us into your family. Thank you for encouraging us today. God, your faithfulness, your goodness is something that you want to reveal to each of us even more and more. In the midst of this crisis, in the midst of this pandemic, we have all been affected differently to different degrees and in different ways. But you have a plan for each of us in the midst of it all. You have solutions for us. You have promises still for us. And God, we're asking you to help us hear, not just with our ears, but with our hearts. We're asking you to help us hear your spirit speak to us about how you want to personally navigate us through this crisis, to navigate us through this, this season. God, I pray for a financer for those who need finances. I pray for relationship healing for those who need healing in relationships. I pray, God, for those who need adjustments on their jobs or things like that. I pray for, for, for miracles to happen in every single way that your people need them today. But I also pray, God, that you help us diagnose where we have, have misplaced our comfort, to diagnose where we have misplaced our trust, and help us to make that trust transfer so that we will stand completely in you, a God who is always faithful and who cannot be shaken by anything that can happen in this world. God, we stand with you, and we're so glad that you stand with us. So I just pray blessings on all of your people today. And as we prepare to leave this place, God, I just thank you for the fellowship they're able to have, even outdoors, to be able to see the smiles on each other's faces, to be able to give air hugs and air high fives and just love on each other, and to see in each other's face that all is, all is well. We pray for those who are watching online, live, or the replay, that you would bless them as well, that you would encounter them wherever they're watching this, 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 this program. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.